You know it's like a tradition at this point, NCXD release a new product and then I overly criticised it on this very channel. And the product they released this time is the brand new NZXT Z690N7 motherboard. Yet another entry into the still baffling NZXT lineup of motherboards that are made from the ground up to fit in with their cases and the kind of matte and minimalist feel their guys at NZXT seem to love that much. And while yes, the motherboard does look nice, both in black and white, and while many people are gonna buy this motherboard just for the appearance, Let's be honest, that's not what really matters here. What matters is what's on the inside, and as always, there's some ups and some downs with the way that NZXT make these motherboards. Starting off with PC expandability, everything seems kinda normal. You have three physical PCE 16x slots, not to mention two additional 1x slots, which is still more than many other motherboards nowadays, so hey, good job there NZXT. Not to mention you also have three M.2 slots to populate with NVMe SSDs. Though seeing the massive shroud this motherboard comes in, you're gonna have to do more unscrewing than usual just to get down to those M.2 ports. So I hope you're patient enough for that because I certainly wouldn't be. Then moving on to CPU power, things here are looking fairly decent as well, though not too groundbreaking. With both an 8 pin and a 4 pin to provide your CPU with power, plus also 12 plus 1 phases when it comes to the VRM situation. That all sounds pretty well and good for a budget motherboard, right? Right? Wait a second, what? This thing is $300? Um, okay then, forget everything I just said. That's right, seeing how this board costs $300, clearly not a lot of that is going towards making sure the CPU is fed enough power. Granted, even at just 12 plus 1 phases, even at 12900K will be able to comfortably run in this motherboard. However, don't expect to be able to really overclock that thing far, and it's just a slap in the face to consumers when you can get much more budget motherboards with even better VRMs. However, thankfully the situation gets a bit nicer when you go up to the rear I.O. Kind of. Sort of. Not really. NZXT, why do you do this to me? Because one of the big standout features for this motherboard is the fact that right there on the back you have Wi-Fi 6E. That is something that a lot of other boards in the similar price point don't even have. So having it here as standard is pretty great. Though the rest of the rear I.O. isn't great. You have 7 USB Type A ports, which is decent enough, especially seeing how only 2 of them are USB Gen 2. Not to mention you also have a high speed USB Type C there as well. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet as standard with Z690. And sadly DisplayPort fanboys are going to be disappointed seeing how this board only has HDMI for integrated graphics. And just, what else can I say? No matter what other saving graces this motherboard can have, its cardinal sins make it really difficult to get excited about. However, none of that even compares to what is probably the biggest sin this motherboard commits. The lack of DDR5 support. That's right, for $300, you cannot get this motherboard in any DDR5 flavor. It's DDR4 or go home. Now yes, granted, many people may not even be interested in running DDR5 on this motherboard, but this lack of choice, especially on such an expensive motherboard, is kind of a slap in the face. Because, uh, yeah, speaking of the price, have I mentioned this thing is $300 yet? Because this thing is $300. This is especially confusing seeing how late in the Z690 life cycle this motherboard is releasing. Because even though, thankfully, it looks like you would be able to use your Z690 motherboards with next generation Intel Rapid Lake CPUs, which are meant to be launching later this year, seeing how next generation Ryzen CPUs will not have any backwards compatibility with DDR4, most likely these 13th gen Intel CPUs will also lack support for a DDR4 memory controller. So if you buy a Z690 board with DDR4, you may be locked out of an upgrade in the future. Now again, that isn't confirmed, that is just speculation, but it's still something to think about when buying a DDR4 Z690 mobile board so close to the release of Intel Rack Lake. <sighs> and even though I know I will get a lot of very, very interesting comments from NZXD fanboys over this video, I just cannot with clear conscience recommend such a mobile board. It does a lot of things right, granted, but seeing how you can get a lot of better features in cheaper mobiles, I mean, what was NZXT thinking with this pricing? Does a giant plastic shroud really cost that much? There's tons of other great alternatives, like for example the Z690 Aorus Pro, which costs just a few dollars less, but you get way more USB Type A ports at the back, not to mention a lot more power phases going to the CPU, plus 
two full 8-pin connectors to also feed the CPU with. Not to mention there's also the absolutely amazing MSI Pro Z690A which I reviewed on this channel before. But of course the big difference is that the MSI board is over $100 less. And guess what, even that board comes with more power phases going to the CPU than this $300 motherboard. Not to mention that it even has more M.2 slots as well. And XT, you know, I really want to love you guys, and I really hope that our relationship will improve in the future. But you know, you have to do something to make this relationship work, you know? Give me a reason to stop slapping you. And if you're also interested in the more budget N60 N5 board, don't worry, I'm gonna have a video coming on that very soon, so definitely subscribe so you don't miss it. But whatever, if you wanna get a better value Z690 board, then use our Amazon links down in the video description below. And hey, while you're still here, and you're not too mad at me for my opinions in this video, then maybe check out our Patreon, which is gonna be down in the video description below. Because even just one single dollar a month truly goes a long way, while you get awesome perks as well. I'd also love to thank my extinct patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, LKB, Meg Sumner, Shane Orcroft, Lansby, and Jesse Herdman. Thank you guys so, so much. Support it truly goes a long way. Down you're also going to find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember, subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.